I've been asked I've been asked to answer a few questions about my life for these people who find audience at home. Alright. So the first question is what is my problem, engulfing concern? The thing I wake up consumed with. Well that's quite a loaded question. The thing I am most consumed with on a very deep and personal level is I really just want to be loved. And not that kind of love where people say they love you. That's a very easy thing to do. I want to be able to see and feel the love just radiating from this person. I want to see it in their tiny actions. Little things like um, buying the right kind of milk. I get just... Or... I don't know. Putting up with habits. Like when you hit the snooze button 15 times before you wake up in the morning. Whatever. And this is something that I've not been able to find. Um, my dad is definitely one of those people who just writes I love you in cards and sends them on their way. He doesn't, he doesn't actually change his life to accommodate the little things for you. And I am so consumed with this. Um, it was the reason why I ran away three years ago. I left my father in New York City and I decided to go on the road with my stand-up comedy tour in an attempt to make that work. I'm still, I don't know, stand-up comedy and love are also related. They're kind of the same thing. Once I realized that stand-up comedy and my father were not going to be sources of this unconditional love that I was looking for, I decided that I wanted to try to have a child and that hasn't worked out. Um, as of today, I've had five miscarriages in the last two years, uh, five different fathers, but apparently it's just not going to work out. Um, next question. Alright, this is the next question here is, who has the answer to my problem and what am I going to do to get what I desire from them? Again, that is a very large question. I have no clue. I have absolutely no fucking idea who is the answer to my problems. How do you... I mean, is it really possible? That's what I'm starting to wonder. I mean, I've thought about having this kid, but ultimately, I mean, I look at the relationships between me and my father and me and my mother, and I am sure that... I do not give them what I'm looking for, so, really, I have no idea. I have absolutely no clue. And, at the same time, this leads into another question that's here on this list. Um, what are your greatest fears and what would happen if they came true? Describe in detail. This is probably what keeps you up at night, your engulfing concern. Uh, what do you do when you realize that you are never going to be loved the way that you want to be loved. No one is ever going to be able to give that to you. It's just physically impossible. But at the same time, it's not fair to ask me to change my desires, my needs. So really, I'm just at this horrible impasse. Um, sometimes, uh, what would you do if they came true? They are true. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I get these images, these violent tendencies. And I don't know. Some I fluctuate back and forth. I mean, I've quit the drugs, I'm doing well, and I'm just really jazzed about life, but at the same time, I feel like the reason I'm jazzed about life is because I'm thinking about death all the time, you know? So, draw from that what you will about what I would do if that came true. It is true. Uh, question number four. Describe your relationship with important people in your life from the first meeting to the present situation 
include at least one significant event that occurred that affects this relationship today. My father, I don't know, I've always felt kind of ignored by my parents, just a bit. They're very focused on themselves and focused on their lives and their careers, and that's really not something that has included me, even as a performer. I'm not an actress, I am a comedian, tragedian, tragedian, comedian, that's all I'm saying, really, think about it. One that occurs that affects this relationship today. It terrifies me that my father doesn't love me, and I know he doesn't love me. And that really just stresses me out. And the reason why this affects my relationship today is that when I see him and when I think of him, I'm reminded by the fact that this is supposed to be someone who's supposed to love me unconditionally, and he just doesn't. And the thought of that is so terrifying. That was actually the reason for this last miscarriage. Uh, as I was telling Maria earlier, I just... It's, it's stupid if you think about it. I was in a hotel lobby, the hotel where I'm staying at while I'm doing this run in New York. And I look across the lobby and there's this guy that looks like my dad. And that was, that was it. I mean, I just knew and there was nothing I could do about it. And that was it. I mean, something as tiny as that and you can lose something so precious. Uh, question number nine. Uh, no. Last question, last question. Describe what you are concerned about with... In, describe what you are concerned with in your moment before you speak. Choose one thing. Is it simple and why to talk about it? Is it something you might see, hear, taste, touch, smell that triggers you to speak? A lot of times it is what the other person has said to you or you see them act, react to something, but it could also be something, also be reacting to the side of the moon, the of the breeze, mm, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, I believe I'm going to be performing my act for you all. You guys, you guys. I feel like I'm going to be performing my act for you guys. Maybe, yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do. I'm still kind of up in the air about that, but really, okay, I'm back, and yes, I'm going to be performing my act for you guys, and you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys, I'm going to be performing my act for you guys, and it's a very interesting piece that I have written. I just sat down, I was on a plane, and I realized that... I don't actually have any accomplishments. All my accomplishments are just things that I've stopped doing, things that I've quit. And, I don't know. It's kind of depressing, but at the same time it's kind of liberating. It's kind of general of this age that we live in, this kind of post-90s grudge kind of way. And, what I always, it's kind of depressing, but I always wonder, in the minute before I do that monologue, What is my purpose? If I have stopped doing all of these things, why do I get up in the morning? I have nothing that I've finished, nothing that I'm proud of that I've done. The only thing that I'm proud of doing is the fact that I stopped doing things. So, I always think, so there's always that. And then, just the fact that a stage, and a bare, mic a bare stage, and a microphone on the stand, and it just gets me thinking about my family, and my mother, who was an actress, and my father, the drama critic, and, I don't know, it draws me back to that love thing again, am I gonna, is this gonna be the night that, that someone is sitting in the audience, that someone's gonna love me, for me, for who I am, the way I am, is this the night that I'm gonna actually finally be able to connect with the audience? And 
at the same time, the same thing I'm thinking is, that has never happened yet. So why are you doing this? Why don't you just quit? Why don't you just quit? So, that is in short the story of my life. Again, I am Kat, and this has been wonderful talking to you guys, and I hope I will see you soon. Bye.